Welcome to the Florida Linguistics Association Beginner's Guide to Phonetics. I'm Lee Ballard, a phonologist at the Florida Linguistics Association. Phonology sometimes causes a lot of angst and stress to the beginning linguistics student. This trouble usually starts with problems in phonetics. So we're going to go through English phonetics today and give you a rough overview that will help you to understand phonetics as a part of phonology and linguistics, as well as to do better on phonology problems and review for your exams. This Florida Linguistics Association intro guide is a multi-part mini-survey course. We'll start with where phonetics and phonology fall within the discipline of linguistics as a whole. Then we'll continue with information about human speech organs and what apparatus people have to make language sounds. I'll introduce you to my friend Crazy Steve, who was crazy enough to allow me to make x-ray pictures of his speech organs. We'll talk about vowels and consonants next, and I'll give you examples of each in English, how they vary from each other, and show you the phonetic symbols from the IPA, or the International Phonetic Alphabet, used to represent them. Finally, we'll conclude with some fun facts from other languages. This video will give you the most important background information and hold off on the nitty-gritty until later videos. Where does phonetics fall within the discipline of linguistics as a whole? Phonetics is one part of phonology, the study of language sounds. Along with morphology, which focuses on the internal structure of words, syntax, which focuses on the structuring of words into sentences and phrases, and semantics, which focuses on the meaning of language. Phonology is one of the classical subfields of linguistics. Some would say historical linguistics is too, but in my opinion, historical is more of a view on all other four main subfields. That is, instead of a main subfield in its own right, it focuses on changes in phonology, morphology, etc. over time, rather than at one time and place. As well, there exist well-accepted interdisciplinary approaches to linguistics. Sociolinguistics is a combination of linguistics and sociology. Psycholinguistics is a combination of linguistics and psychology, and so on. After you watch this video through to the end, check out the introductions to syntax and morphology that we've got up on the Florida Linguistics Association YouTube channel. Within phonology, you can investigate sounds themselves and how they fall into patterns. Usually beginning students learn phonetics first, since phonetics deals with the sounds themselves. Articulatory phonetics refers to the physical gestures used in producing sounds, while acoustic phoneticians deal with sound waves. You may have heard of Pratt or spectrograms, which are associated with running experiments in this kind of research. It's also possible to run articulatory experiments, like I'm doing by x-raying my friend Crazy Steve, but these are much rarer these days. The rest of phonology deals with how sounds fall into patterns, either in specific languages or in general. In other words, some might equate phonetics with the study of the entire sound inventory of human language, and equate phonology with the study of the sound structure of human language including the sounds themselves, as well as how those sounds interact with each other in different languages. The rest of this course will deal with articulatory phonetics. For more information on acoustic phonetics, for example, after watching this video through to the end, check out the Florida Linguistics Association Introduction to Reading a Spectrogram, also found on our YouTube channel. There are only a couple important things we use to make language sounds. This is the most romantic part of the lecture, and you might want to watch it with your girlfriend or boyfriend on Valentine's Day to get in the mood. How these pieces interact is responsible for all the differences in sounds. Some speech organs can move, like the lips, the jaw, and especially the tongue. The lungs help push air out, or in rare cases can create an air vacuum like in African click languages or languages with so-called ingressive sounds. Like once I had a friend from South Africa whose name was pronounced something like Ouiswa. The first sound was an ingressive. The glottis is the voice box or Adam's apple and closing the glottis creates a humming vibration called voicing 
that is a part of almost all vowels and many consonants. To create nasal sounds, even the soft palate can help drop the uvula down to block air from coming in through the mouth. The rest of the speech organs, like the nose, the gums, the alveolar ridge, and hard palate, and the teeth, don't really move around. Now I'll introduce you to my friend Crazy Steve. When I joked that I wanted to x-ray a friend for this presentation and pay them $8 an hour, he got really excited about the money and the chance to put it on his CV. I told him it would be dangerous, but since he's a grad student, he's desperate for money and any career experience he can find. Here's where the speech organs are located. Study this picture carefully because you need to understand this to understand phonetics. One of the main differences in phonetics is the difference between vowels and consonants. It's not always a clear dividing line, as there are sometimes sounds in languages, like L, R, and N in English, that can have vowel-like features. But in general, vowels carry the melody of language. Consonants, on the other hand, are mostly noise. Vowels are created by resonating air in a larger or smaller area. The size of this area is determined by where the tongue is. The smaller the resonation area, the higher the pitch, and the larger the area, the lower the pitch, which is logical when you think that a piccolo plays higher than a tuba. Consonants are classified by a degree of obstruction and where that main obstruction occurs. This is the end of part one. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to check out parts two and three, as well as other videos on our channel and, of course, our website www.floridalinguistics.com This has been Lee Ballard for the Florida Linguistics Association and hope to see you again soon.